You're watching Drake Wing Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. It's suddenly on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you with a Let's Play episode of Echo Flynn's Path. So y'all, before we jump into it, just wanted to let y'all know that our Patreon is now up for as little as $5. Y'all can help support the channel, get some awesome rewards like permanent access to our community Discord server and full access to upcoming Not Safe for Work videos. Anyway, y'all, let's go ahead and jump right back in. Alarm chain, you are up, and let's go. All right. <clears throat> Eventually, everybody sits to eat. There's not enough room at the kitchen island for everyone, so TJ and Jenna sit on the counter by the fridge. TJ's still not saying much. All right, still can't access Wi-Fi or make calls. Daxton, is it? Yep. Were we not taking shelter from Cl Were we not taking shelter from Clint? We wouldn't mean to impose upon you like this. So my apologies. It's all right. He pokes out a clump of almond shavings in a salad. I just don't. I just don't. I just want to know what's going on. She looks to TJ. Then, after a quiet, affirming nod from the link, she responds to the salamander. When we were younger, one of one of our neighbors, our friend, drowned in Lake Emma. She pauses. Actually, they died in a hospital later on. But the point is, we were all there for it. It was a rather traumatizing experience, even for the older members of our sort of friend group at the time. She speaks She speaks in such a plain, even tone, she might as well be reading the directions off the back of a TV dinner. Everyone, including Daxon, looks incredibly uncomfortable. The salamander just nods in faux understanding. Oh! He digs into his salad with such focus, it's like he's trying to read a book in there. So let's just jump right into it. She takes a big drink from her smoothie, leaving us in anticipation. A groan quietly. Flynn? Fucking what? Do you believe that Chase killed Sydney? What? Daxton looks up, letting out a little wisp of laughter, assuming we're joking. As he sees he's the only one laughing, he starts to look visibly tense. I didn't fucking expect her to just straight up and ask me this either. Well, the way I see it, either Chase is lying or TJ is. Or fuck it, maybe they both are and are covering for each other's asses. But Chase in the but Chase in there was spouting bullshit like a steer's rear. I point at TJ who quickly looks away. Threw me under the bus the moment he started squealing. Chase would never lie to me like that. He lied to you all the fucking time, you not brain bastard. Leo snarls. Do you, you have any non rose tinted memories left in that fucking thick skull of yours? I need to listen to nothing from somebody who manipulated him for sex. I stand up, I'm still falling back and hitting the floor. Oh goddamn dare he. Not this shit again. I didn't fucking do that. Do you really think I'm that I'm some for, sort of fucking rapist? You're so stupid. Why won't you goddamn listen to me? Enough! TJ shifts, TJ shifts, looking like he's about to start crying again. I'm not lying. I clutch the edge of the counter, trying to control my breathing. I slowly pull up my stool and sit, trying to ignore the strange look Leo's giving me. Kind of reminds me of those fish in the freezer, where they stay forever when, where they stay forever when there's no more circuits firing in their tiny brains. I wonder if I'll ever love it somebody enough to go full stupid in the face of facts like this. What a poor crazy idiot. It's still word versus word with you two. And Chase fucked off once TJ told us what happened from his point of view. Which took you long enough, by the way. I hard eye the links, but his own eyes are cast so far away from me, I might as well be in the back of his head. TJ? Jenna rubs her paws on a napkin, wringing it, wringing it some before speaking again. <sighs> Second yell, water sign. Oh boy, this is getting good. Yeah, Leo is uh not taking any calls right now. <laughs> Jenna rubs her paws on the napkin. Okay. Tell us about the monster you saw. Oh, come on! Jenna ignores me. Give us as many details as you can, and take as much time as you need. TJ clutches his bowl of salad in his lap with both paws. Looks like he hasn't had a bite. His eyes take on that more reflective quality they always do when the tears are starting to well. It's unnerving on a sort of primal level to see TJ tearing up like this. He's an adult, grown-ass man, looking just like he did when he was a kid. Reminds me how little any of us have truly grown up. Um, like I said before, tall with burnt skin. Reddish, I guess. How tall? Like, almost seven feet? Jenna frowns. How did it move? Really fast or not at all? It was, I was, it was, I, like, pictures, you know? A slideshow that was being fast-forwarded. Carl finally looks up from his hooves, the ram appearing increasingly nervous. When it walked through the water, the water didn't move like a wake. It just splashed out with each step. Tell me about the face again, please. Oh, uh, okay. TJ's having a hard time getting the words out, but Jenna doesn't stop. She looks... wrapped? Three holes. Two for the eyes and one for the mouth. They weren't, like, bloody or anything, just empty. Dark. Everyone's silent for a moment. Then next to me, Daxon rises up to his feet. The salamander walks around to where TJ's sitting, then points to something behind him. 
Like this? Oh god. That is fucking creepy. He's pointing at the electrical socket. TJ turns to look at it. TJ turns, looks at it, then he switches, and he switches if startled. He quickly wipes his eyes and nods. Daxton stares, slack-jawed. Leo takes a loud slurp from his smoothie. There's a dribble of the pink liquid stuck in his fur around the edges of his jowls. Guys, am I missing something here? Oh, I saw it! So what, Carl? That thing! Carl gestures towards the electrical outlet. I give him an incredulous look as we as we meet each other's glances for a second. Yeah? I saw a pretty nifty light switch back when I was 13. I looked at TJ. It didn't, t it didn't make me hide the truth about my friend's murder about a decade ago. Shut up, dude! I blink at Carl. He stands up, still staring at the socket. Oh, when I crashed my car that night, you remember? I do. Carl didn't want to talk about it for months after it happened. I only found out about the truth then. It was after he dropped out of college. Apparently it was way fucking past twilight and he was drugged out of his mind. That scabies-ridden fat-ass Jeremy gave him acid in his trailer and he had a bad trip. Hey, no. Carl describes some cartoon he put on. A tiger and a bird with the tiger baking the bird alive. He mentioned how vivid everything was. Now fucking... Now the fucking Jeremy wouldn't stop laughing. He busted out of there and drove off and drove off all hightail like. While making his way down Route 65, he swerved in a pole. The impact would have killed him if he weren't so thick skulled. And of course he told his dear old parents about it and they took the blame for everything. They didn't want him to be tested when the cops showed. It wasn't until a couple months ago when he told me. His drug addled mind, he thought he had driven to Pueblo and picked up Chase. Carl claimed he was talking to him the whole ride back, telling him how college life was going and shit. Stroking his horns, mentioning how he missed him and wanted him back as a roommate. You know, all the shit Chase never actually said after Carl dropped out. The fucker barely even responded to his messages. He could have sworn when he swerved off the road and struck the pole, he killed Chase, crushed somehow at impact. He wouldn't stop shaking. I made a joke that it would have helped him bury the body. I threw up later thinking about it. Yeah. The ram is looking at me now with these really big, sad eyes. I've never seen him like this. Sober and fully fucking aware of really bad shit. Usually the moment shit starts getting him remotely bad, he, sh he tokes till his mind melts the horrors away, as he calls them. There's none of that shit here, that's for certain. I never liked how it makes me feel, and Daxton's too, too nerdy to know any pot dealers. This is gonna sound real nuts, but that thing TJ's describing, with the electrical socket face, it was chasing me that night, man. I saw it, exactly how TJ described. That's how it moved. I thought it, I had outran it, but then it was in the car with me where I thought Chase was, and I hit the fucking pole, man. Where Chase was? Leo blinks at Carl and raised, with raised brows. I let out a puff of exasperated air. You were tripping balls on acid. I looked at the rest of the group. That's why he thought he was with Chase. Leo's expression furrows. You've done acid, Carl? Yeah, I know how it sounds. I thought it seemed familiar, uh, familiar earlier when TJ was describing it at City Hall, but that face, it was just like an outlet. Dax is nodding along with everything Carl says. Well, Flynn, I literally was just, just telling you about this shit. I saw it in my dream, in the water. It's the second time I've seen it in two days. I recognize it, too. Not in a dream or because of drugs, though. She looks over at TJ, who appears even more frightened with the confessions from those around him. When I was younger, well, much younger, I sometimes saw it during times I was really angry or sad. It's the closest thing I've ever had to what my grandmother described as a spiritual experience. When I told her about it, she told me it sounded a lot like a Wendigo. This is really silly, guys. We just need to talk to Chase. He'll clear all this up for us. Leo continues to eat, the one of us still doing so at this point. Daxton gawks at him. Are you for real right now, man? I'm the only one who's thinking real things right now, yeah. No, Leo, you're off in La La Land without a single fucking thought in your head right now. <laughs> the wolf scarfs down an incredibly large bite of salad. A guy like Leo probably needs to eat four meals a day with, half, with his wolf metabolism. His nose is starting to bleed, too. Probably cracking from how the heat dehumidified I keep it in here. So... Oh, what's this? We have been intense. One second, y'all. Ah, okay. Alright. Okay, alright. So, despite all, uh, all of us, Sans, you and Flynn, having had experience with this thing, you want to completely disregard it? Leo just nods, and to be fair, I'm fucking flabbergasted about what they're saying as well. At the same time, the coincidence of all this is just too much. 
TJ's tough to read now, but I don't doubt the sincerity of Carl, Jen, or even Daxton that they believe what they're saying. I just want the truth. That's all I want. I sigh. I think we should talk to my aunt. Why you Why your aunt? She's good with this sort of shit. I pause. Well, I don't know what this is that's happening, but fuck, I don't know what else to do. Leo just frowns at me. I frown back at him. You can go home if you want. I know it's tempting now that Chase isn't here for you to stalk. Chase will track me down like he always does. He'd be, pit he'd be right pissed if I let anything happen to you guys, though. Who knows, maybe he's seen the Wendigo, too. Daxton side-eyes me with a baffled look. You have a spare gun I can borrow? Jesus, is this really what it's come to? I look at Leo for a long moment. He's been sort of a gun nut as of late, which is real strange, and strange knowing how against him he was in high school. You licensed? Yep, open carry. I know what I'm doing. That's not saying much. That's not saying much, noting our state has the most lax weapon licensing standards in the nation. That's typical Jenna for you. Reality's going out the window, but she'll still be there thrusting some sociopolitical bullet point in the middle of it. All my shit's licensed for me and me alone. Leo just stares at me before walking off. To your aunt's house, then. He grabs a flashlight and makes his way out the front door. I guess... <clears throat> I guess we're going. It seems so. Carl and Daxton look at each other. I'm not feeling very good. If you're gonna puke, do it on Daxton's side of the sink. The salamander, who is already looking unnerved, somehow manages to frown even more. Jenna strokes the lynx's arm, muttering something that I can't quite catch. For a split second, a glimmer of a sad smile appears on his face. It diminishes quickly, but I guess I'm glad TJ's not completely broken. The group begins to head out, leaving their plates and cups on the counter. I linger a bit, catching Jenna as she's wiping her paws off on a dish towel. Hey. Yeah? You wanted to tell me something? She gives me a look that much... Like she doesn't know what I'm what I'm talking about. Hmm? She pauses and nods as if remembering something. I'm happy for you and Carl. Her tone is idle, her mind seemingly focused elsewhere. If he's going to explore sexuality, it's good that it's with someone who he knows and trusts and who's, you, you know, experienced. Water time. Flynn's like, I don't do that gay shit. I'm not gay. I just like to suck dicks. What? Cross my arms tightly over my chest, squinting down at her. How the fuck would she know I'm experienced? We ain't a thing. Yes, you weren't ever much for having things in general. She looks out the window, her expression kind of like a mix of distant and troubled. Everyone's filing into the van except Daxton, who is holding up his phone to the sky, trying to get service, I guess. As I open my mouth through her butt, she holds up her paw. It's not what I wanted to talk to you about, and I suppose current matters are... She sighs. More pressing than would be appropriate to delay for this conversation. Her demeanor seems to shift. Her posture not as full of... Not as full of that holier-than-thou air that she usually seems hell-bent on putting on. I can see Leo behind the wheel now. Surely getting antsy. Yeah, Leo looks like he's about to pop a hemorrhoid already. I just wanted you to know, and I understand your concerns more clearly. I grunt. Yeah, well, hopefully my aunt can help me understand yours. I thumb back toward the electrical socket. Jenna looks at it, purses her lips, and scowls. I can't tell if she's just frowning at herself. If she's just frowning at herself at this point. When all logic's gone out the fucking window, her shtick of being the rational mind here is certainly a challenge. With a small nod, she turns, heading out with the rest. A sigh, pulling back the lever on my repeater and watching the clip extend outward. I remember to load it after all, just hoping I don't need it. Alright y'all, I'm going to pause it right there. Thank y'all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, and check out our Patreon if you can. It always helps. Anyway, before I before I head out, I'm going to go ahead and let uh, go ahead and give a quick shout out to our lovely bronze tier patrons. Thank y'all for all you do for the channel. We greatly appreciate your support. Thank you to our uh, silver tier patron, Cade Silverman. Thank you for going a bit above and beyond. It's greatly appreciated. And thank you to our gold tier patron, Amr. You're awesome. We love you. Thank you for subbing to our ultimate tier. Anyway, if y'all want to get your names in the credits, get access to our not safe for work contents as little as five dollars. Alrighty, I love you all, and I'll see y'all in the next video. Bye bye.